Praise God. A blessed uh, Christmas morning to you. It's a joy to be here on a beautiful morning like this. Again, it's Christmas morning, and I'm, I'm very excited to be with you this morning. God is good. Uh, this morning, we want to speak on the topic, A King is Born. Hallelujah. Well, our scripture reading will be taken from the book of uh, Matthew chapter 2, reading from verse uh, 1, and that we're going to read verse 2. Praise God. Hear what it says. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. Father, we thank you for your word. You said your word is forever settled in heaven. Lord God, today we pray that this message, Lord God, will touch some soul, touch some heart. Father, have your divine way. L let these words, Lord, be your words in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. A king is born. The Bible says that in the days of Herod the king, that wise men came from the east. I don't know which part of the east they came from. I don't know in particular what type of men they were. But from looking at what they did, in fact, it tells me that they were astrologers or men who looked at stars and the moon and things like this. For they have noticed something strange in the sky over Bethlehem. They didn't know exactly which way to go. But the Bible tells us because they believe that this star is a sign of a king, they went to the best known place that a king should be born. The Bible tells us that they went to Herod. And Herod being king at the time, in his family he's not expecting any newborn. He consulted to find out if perhaps somebody in his palace or next of king is pregnant. And when he came back with the results, nobody of his kindred was pregnant. He was not expecting a birth in his kingdom. Therefore, when the wise men convinced him that yes, a king is born, the Bible tells us that Herod gathered all the elders of Jerusalem, all the priests and all the people who he thought would have known that a king should be born to Israel. In fact, according to the Bible, the Bible tells us the place where this king should be born in the book of Micah. In fact, in the book of Micah chapter 5 and verse 2, it lets you know, But thou Bethlehem, thou art little among the thousands of Judah, but ye out of thee shall he come forth unto thee. Praise God. The Bible tells us that Herod searched diligently because he wanted to find out, is this true? You see, we in the natural, when a king is born, we celebrate. In the natural, when a king is born, we take the time to spread joy and give glory. I remember when Prince Charles' son was born and it was a big thing in England. I remember the celebration that happened. But when the birth of Jesus happened, it, there was no celebration because Herod the king did not even know that a king was being born in his dispensation. 
Here you have the wise men. And in fact, the Bible tells us that when the wise men left Herod, after being told by Herod, go to Bethlehem, because according to the scriptures, a king who is supposed to be born to the Jews will be born in Judea of Bethlehem. They left Herod on their way. But one notable thing that I understand about this scripture is that as soon as they left Herod, the Bible tells us that that same star that brought them from the east to Jerusalem, that same star appeared again. And what's so good about that star is that that star took those wise men. In fact, the Bible describes it like this. And the star stood over where the baby was. In fact, some theologians and some people will, will say, all right, it was not in the manger, and I agree. By the time the wise men came and found the child, the child was already around two years old, but that star followed and led them right to where this baby was born. Here is the king. There the Bible tells us that when they found a child, the child who is king, the Bible tells us that they brought gifts. A lot of us at times wonder what kind of gift should I give to this king. Today is a beautiful day and it's a day that a lot of us will give gifts. A lot of us will receive gifts. And a lot of people think about this time as the wise men did. They brought to him a gift. The Bible says that some brought frankincense, some brought myrrh. But the point I want to make to you today is what gift would you give this king? This king deserves to be gloried. This king deserves to be praised. In fact, it's only God that will send his son in a place like this world to die for mankind's sin. The gift did not begin with the wise men. The gift began with God. For the Bible says, for God so loved this world that he gave. The first gift was given by God. The first gift was given for man because man had sin. That's why this king was born. Imagine God left glory. Jesus left that home in glory where angels bow down to him, where all majesty and power belonged to him to come as a simple man. The Bible gives us a record in Matthew chapter 1 that he was born in a manger, the lowest of places, not in a palace. Here the king is born in a manger. And some people say, well, because of, of the, 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 the times and the, the situation that a room wasn't found for him. But I'm here to let you know that Jesus Christ was not born in the palace because some people will think as today that it's too high for me. He is too great for me. I cannot walk into his presence. But here is God coming lowly, the king of kings being born in a manger where every common man can come to him the bible tells us that he was born king he was not an ordinary man he left all the glories of heaven to come in a humble state the Bible tells us when the wise men saw him, they did not see no purple robe denoting that a king was here. Sir, it may not seem to you that Jesus Christ is important because he wasn't born in the place that you expected him to be born. It may seem like, hey, this Jesus Christ, this king as we proclaim him to be, may not seem important to you because 
of his lowliness of stature. But I'm here, I'm glad today because Jesus came that a simple man like me and like you can be identified with him. It said that Christmas for some is a very sad time. It said that Christmas for some, in fact, some people say that Christmas for some is some of the hardest time. They say for some people who are going through broken relationships, uh, Christmas is a very hard time. But I'm here to let you know there is a Christ in Christmas. We're not only celebrating because we want to buy this and buy that, but we are celebrating because the King of God glory is with us in fact it's interpreted God with us this king was born this king was born and he reigns today supreme as king he reigns today supreme as Lord because he did not stay a babe you see, why I'm saying this is although we celebrate the birth in the manger, I just want to identify with you that, hey, after he was born, a few years later, the wise men saw him. So he did not remain a baby in the crib. But the Bible tells us at two years when the, the wise men found him, that he started to mature. Again, he became a, a baby in, in, in the toddler stage. And so he moved from then. The Bible tells us when he was 12, years old he confounded the priest in the temple and I'm here to let you know beside that he grew again he became a man in fact the Bible says that this king grew up and he would rule over his his father's throne the throne of David and so I'm here to let you know that that king that was born then he is alive today one thing I've noticed about this king, being born in a manger, one thing I've noticed is that a lot of people today still don't find room for this king. Just like when that Joseph and Mary got to Bethlehem. I don't know if it was a cold winter night. I don't know if it was a hot uh, summer's day. But when they got there because of Herod's tax, they, each man had to go back to his own country to register. And there they were looking for a room, looking for a place that this pregnant woman who is almost ready to give birth, that this pregnant woman should be able to put this beautiful child down and there was found no room. You see, I wonder today, do you have room? Do you have room in your heart? Or are you saying like this in Keeper? I don't have room in my heart. Or I don't have room in my house. But there is a stable. I remember a story about a young lady leaving for college. In fact, coming back home from college. And they were going out partying and having a good time. And her mother called her and said, Don't forget Jesus. Put him in the car with you when you're coming. The story goes that that car got into an accident. But the mother could recall the daughter saying, well, if there is room in the trunk, maybe he could fit there. When the mother looked at the wreck, the whole car was smashed. But the trunk was safe. Sir, today, do you have room for Jesus in your heart? This same king, the same king of kings, do you have room for him in your heart? You need to find room for Jesus in your heart. You need to find room for him in your life. In fact, according to the, the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3, the Bible tells us there is a time and a season for everything under the sun. 
Some of us misunderstand the time and the season we are in. Some think that this time is a time for partying. Some people think that this time is just a time for celebration in the ordinary sense of the word. But I'm glad to say, although this season is a season that we call the Christmas season and we remember the birth of Christ, I am hastened to recall that life is in seasons. And just now we will celebrate not only Christmas, but we will celebrate a New Year's season and we'll move from one season into the next. My question is, would you leave this Christmas season? and enter into another season, another season of your life, the same way. You see, although your season may seem hard, some seasons are dry. In fact, in Trinidad and Tobago, we have only two seasons. We have the dry season and the wet season. And from time to time, we move from one season into the other. Life is also like that. Life is in seasons. How long have you been living in the season of sin? How long have you been living in your season of despair? I'm here to let you know today a king was born to take you out of that season, that season of despair, that season of, of, of lack. A king was born to bring you into a good season. As the book of Ecclesiastes says, there's a time to sow, but there's a time to reap. There's a time to cast away stones, and there's a time to gather stones. I believe with all my heart that the season we are in right now is a season for you to give Jesus a chance in your life. Because this same Jesus that the, the wise men worship. This same Jesus wants to change your season. I love the Christmas season. I must, I must confess that. It's one of the seasons that I love. I love two main seasons. I love Easter and I love Christmas. Long time ago it used to be because of the food. But now that I've realized what the season is all about, I know that some of you spent all night last night trying to get the house ready. I know that some of you have spent your last dime to buy the last set of drinks. But I'm here to let you know the season is not about the drinks and it's not about the new curtains. The season is really and truly about Jesus Christ. The reason for the season, the reason why you should today give God thanks and praise not for a day but for the life that he came to give. He came to give his life a ransom for your sins and my sins. Sins. This season is a good season. You see, Jesus came to take you out of that bad season. For years you've been in it. But he's come. In fact, I like that terminology. He had come. That tells me that it's present. It's not only for back then. He is presently here. You see, he came as a baby in the manger. But as I explained to you before, he grew up. He did not stay as a babe. The Bible tells us he died, was buried, he rose again. In fact, the Bible tells us that he ascended into heaven. And one day, he will come again. I'm here to let you know, Jesus Christ is here to change your personal season. Don't celebrate this season without Jesus Christ. You see, a lot of us make the mistake of trying to celebrate this Christmas season without the king of the season. I'm here to let you know that Jesus is the reason for the season. Today, if you have not known the true meaning of the season, I want to take the time to introduce you to the man of the season. And while I have a little time, I want to do two things. One, I want to pray with you. 
And I also want to ask you to give your life to Jesus Christ. The reason for the season. Don't let this Christmas day pass. And all the celebrations and all the gift giving and all the gift receiving. Don't allow it to pass without you accepting the real reason for this season. I know you're watching this broadcast and you're saying, well, I've done so much things for this season. I've done and spent so much. But rarely in my heart, the season doesn't mean much to me. Sir, madam, it's you I'm talking to. You. After drinking all the rum, after eating all the cake, it's still just a plain season. But I'm here to let you know that this is your moment. This is the hour of your relief. Would you pray this prayer with me? Would you pause a minute and pray this prayer with me? Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I recognize now that you are the king. You are the king of kings. So I accept you now into my heart. If you've prayed that prayer with me, just pause a minute. I would like to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, I pray, Lord God, that that man, that woman who is looking at this broadcast today, thinking that Christmas is all about things and not about the Savior. In fact, they have replaced Christ with Santa Claus. But Lord God, today I pray, Lord God, that you will minister to this individual, to their hearts, that they will recognize you as King of Christmas. In Jesus' name, amen. For you who are sick, I know it's Christmas, it's a hard time to be sick. But if you're sick around this time, for those in the hospital, I must remember you. I want to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord God, that your healing power will flow from this pulpit, Lord God, to that hospital bed, wherever that patient is and that needs your deliverance now. I pray deliverance in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Father, we thank you now for doing it. In Jesus' name, at this time, I would like to, from my, my family and I, and also Brother Prisga, Pastor Reverend Prisga, wish you a wonderful, wonderful Christmas. Remember the Christmas is about Christ. He came to die for you. And so from my family and I, we wish you a God-centered Christmas. And also, for the new year, we want to wish you a God-centered new year. I know some of you are waiting for New Year's, um, Old Year's night to make a new resolution. But I'm, I'm glad to say that you don't have to wait. You can do it now. And let the Christ of Christmas reign in your heart. Again, we say a blessed Christmas day to you. If you're going out there, be safe. God richly bless you until another time. Amen and amen. This program comes to you compliments of the Tobago Inspirational Network. To support this and other programs, we encourage you to give to TIN. Contributions can be made at any First Citizens Bank at account number 203-4679. We thank you for your support.